Hello and welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I am its host, Philip Champion. Pavi Resinen, a member of the Finnish parliament and a mother of five children, faces six years in prison. She will appear in court next Monday. The Finnish prosecutor's office found that the MP's statements humiliate and discriminate against LGBT people and incite intolerance. In her speeches and on social networks, the Finnish MP voiced the unpopular point of view that marriage can only be between one man and one woman. For more than 13 hours, the police interrogated her about how she interprets the letters of the Apostle Paul. Here's what she said about the experience. I thought it was quite a privilege to have these kinds of discussions with the police. I had many times during these hours the possibility to tell to the police the message of the gospel, what the Bible teaches about the value of human beings, that all people are created in the image of God and that is why they're all valuable. It was like giving Bible studies to the police. According to the MP, the absurdity of the interrogations reminded her of the Soviet Union. The police asked her if she was ready to renounce her opinion, to which she stated the following. I answered that I will stand on what I believe and I will speak about these things and write about these things also in the future, because they are a matter of conviction, not only an opinion. Resinen has been charged with three counts of agitation over statements expressing her beliefs about human sexuality and marriage. Evangelical Lutheran Mission Bishop Johanna Pahola has been charged with one count of ethnic agitation for publishing Resonance booklet. The bishop himself commented on the allegations against him. When postmodernism first swept over Western countries, its basic core was denial of absolute truth. The only truth was that you must allow everyone to have his or her own subjective truth. This hyper-individualism continues, but it has now a different tone. If you are against LGBTQ plus ideology, so-called diversity, equality and inclusivity, you are not only considered to be old-fashioned, but rejected as morally evil. This is what the Prosecutor General understands her duty to be, to protect fragile citizens and victims from the intolerant and hateful Christians. Recently, the members of the Christian Interconfessional Consultative Committee of Russia have published a joint statement in support of the Christians of Finland who defend traditional Christian family values. The statement, for instance, says the following. We support those Christians who, in spite of the growing influence of liberalism, are true to the traditional principles of their faith and who do not refuse to vindicate biblical moral values. Metropolitan Paul of Drama of the Archdiocese of Greece has said that by creating its exarchate in Africa, the Russian Orthodox Church showed that it did not learn the lesson of 1917 well. He says the following. The Russians are acting too bluntly and provocatively, relying on state forces, but they forget about the divine slap in the face that they received during the 1917 revolution and show that they did not learn this lesson well. At the same time, the Greek Metropolitan did not speak about the role that the Patriarchate of Constantinople played in the Soviet attempt to destroy the Russian Orthodox Church. It is a known fact that the Patriarchate of Constantinople supported the Bolshevik government and the schism in the Russian Church. In 2013, there were documents published on this matter by Doctor of Historical Sciences, leading researcher of the Central State Archives of St. Petersburg, Mikhail Shkarovsky. It becomes clear from the documents that the Church of Constantinople actively supported the so-called renovationist schism in the Soviet Union. The renovationist church was a schismatic movement that arose in 1922 after the Bolsheviks came to power. Here are some passages from archival documents. 9th of June, 1922. The Patriarch of Constantinople, Miletius IV, sent to his representative in the Russian Soviet Federal Socialist Republic, Archimandrite Jakob Dimopolo, a letter in which he expresses his wish under certain conditions to send a delegation of the Patriarchate of Constantinople to Moscow to a congress organized in May 1922 by the Soviet authorities of representatives of the renovationist schism. 7th to 11th of August 1922. 
the representative of the Patriarch of Constantinople in the Soviet Union, Archimandrite Jakob Dimopoulou, took part in the Congress of the Living Church Renovationist Schism as an honorary member of the Presidium, 29th of April to the 9th of May 1923. The representative of the Patriarch of Constantinople in the Soviet Union, Archimandrite Jakob Dimopoulou, took part in the Second Renovationist Council, which adopted a resolution on the defrocking of His Holiness Patriarch Tikhon of Moscow and all Russia. 6th of May 1924. In his speech to the Synod of Constantinople, Patriarch Gregorius VII called upon the Patriarch of Moscow and all Russia, Tikhon, to renounce voluntarily his patriarchal rule and to abandon all ecclesiastical administration as soon as possible. 21st of July 1924. The representative of the Patriarch of Constantinople in the USSR, Archimandrite Basil Dimopoulou, appealed on behalf of Patriarch Gregorius VII and all the proletariat of Constantinople to the head of the Secretariat on Cultic Affairs under the Presidium of the Soviet Government, Mr. Smirovich. He said, Having defeated all enemies and overcome all obstacles, and having become strengthened, Soviet Russia can now respond to the requests of the proletariat of the Middle East, which is well disposed towards Russia and which in its turn disposes people towards it. It is in your hands, Comrade Smidovich, to make the name of Soviet Russia even more popular in the East than it was previously. And I request that you render to the Patriarchate of Constantinople this great service as a powerful and strong government of a mighty country, even more so as the ecumenical patriarch recognized throughout the East as the head of all the Orthodox people, has demonstrated his loyalty through his actions to the Soviet authorities which he has recognized. Let me remind you that according to the Government Commission for the Rehabilitation of Victims of Political Repression, only in the period from 1937 to 1941, 175,000 Russian Orthodox priests were arrested, of which 110.7 thousand people were killed. Do religion education lessons at school affect people's religiosity in adulthood? This question was answered by researchers at the Eiffel Munich Institute in Germany. The conclusion of the researchers is very interesting. The absence of religion lessons at school leads to an increase in the number of atheists. In addition, the results of the study suggest that the absence of religious lessons in school leads to a change in people's attitudes towards marriage and children. Work becomes more important. Researchers note an increase in the activity of respondents in the labor market, an increase in the number of working hours, as well as an increase in wages. The abolition of religious education significantly reduces the religiosity of people both in private and in public places. They tend to pray less and don't attend churches that much. And if earlier the majority of scholars thought of religiosity as a personal decision of people, then now the study of the Munich Institute has demonstrated that collective choice also plays a very important role. The study was conducted among 58,000 adults who went to school in West Germany between 1950 and 2004. Let me remind you that in Germany, at different times, instead of compulsory religious education, one could choose to study either religion or ethics. Such experiments took place from 1972 in Bavaria until 2004 in North Rhine-Westphalia. Patriarch Parfiri of Serbia has declared his continued support for the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church and its first hierarch, Metropolitan Anufri. He spoke about this in an interview with International Life magazine. The Patriarch said the following. We will not change our position. We provide and will continue to provide significant support to Metropolitan Anufri and his church. Patriarch Parfiri also drew the attention to, I quote, the amazing ease with which the Patriarchate of Constantinople ignored the holy canons, ecclesiology, the age-old order of the Orthodox Church and the sacred tradition. Despite this, he says, one should not give up love for the Mother Church. I quote, We hope and pray that the day will come, and as soon as possible, when non-Orthodox, anti-Church influence and non-Church projects will be cast off, which, as far as I can see, haven't brought anything good to anyone in Ukraine. 
And when we all return to brotherly love and the pan-Orthodox solution of all problems in the spirit of the conciliarity of the Church. Describing the situation in Ukraine, the Patriarch made an analogy with Montenegro. In his opinion, due to the collapse of states, in both cases, the enemies of Christianity had the opportunity to split the autocephalous and autonomous churches. However, he believes that the widest freedom, complete autonomy and governance, which the Russian Orthodox Church has granted to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, is an example of the manifestation of the highest economia and church consciousness. If you have already watched the New Year's edition of Harry Potter 20 years later and think that you have seen everything, then you're mistaken. The British Daily Mail writes that the US TikTok producer Meghan McKeeley has announced a casting call for the Harry Potter online series. But here is the interesting part. Harry Potter himself, Hermione, Dumbledore, Lord Voldemort and other characters will be played by transgender and non-binary actors. For example, according to the casting notes, the role of Harry Potter's father is only open to an actor who is, I quote, Asian, Black, African descent, ethnically ambiguous, multiracial, indigenous, Latino, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, South Asian, Indian, Southeast Asian or Pacific Islander. Hopefully not at once. Producers have not specified who they want to play Lily Evans, Harris's mother, but have said that they want a gender non-conforming, non-binary, trans female. Filming is scheduled to begin in June-July 2022. The newspaper writes that the producers will almost certainly face a legal battle from best-selling author J.K. Rowling, who would not be willing to give them permission to use her characters. And for Rowling herself, apparently this story will be another test of strength. In 2020, Rowling had publicly stated that she was concerned about the changes taking place in the world. According to the writer, biological women are deprived of the rights granted to them by nature in favor of transgender people. After this statement, a flurry of criticism and accusations of transphobia had fallen upon her. Moreover, because of this statement, she was not invited to take part in the special episode in honor of the 20th anniversary of the first Harry Potter movie. I guess this is precisely how modern cancel culture tends to work. Well, this is all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on The Orthodox View.